Hi everyone, you probably know what this is if you're watching it, but this is a VMS 70 disc cutting lathe used for the production of vinyl records and today we will be looking at the motor which drives this heavy turntable, uh, it's a direct drive turntable and it uses a motor made by Lyrec and today we will we'll be refurbishing it and bringing it back to its former glory. So here's a Lyrec motor that we've refurbished earlier and now we're going to show you how to do another one which has been laying dormant in a shed for many years and has gone rusty so to the workshop okay so here we are with the Lyrec motor on the bench um, and we're going to have a little look at it and see what's missing and kind of what's wrong with it and uh, just have a little visual inspection really before we take it apart so let's have a look at it okay so here is a close-up of the motor and as you can see the nameplate says Lyrec and uh, made in Denmark this is all very dirty and um, there's a serial number the voltage and the frequency so this is 50 cycles because it's uh, made for the UK mains or European mains and the model is an SM8 slash 3B which is the last kind of model of motor they made and instead of 78 RPM on this motor they replaced it with 66 and two thirds um, so now we're just gonna have a look at some of the other things that are missing or wrong with it okay so we can see um, from here that the, this uh, this spigot is missing which is used for for the motor to hang on this cast frame and you can also see the connection blocks and stuff uh, the electronics in this is probably okay as they're pretty robust in that respect and we've also got um, a bag of parts here which kind of came from it so that obviously goes there which is a, a coupling um, to kind of shock absorb um, and isolate the motor from, from this cast frame and there's various other bits of rubber here which might need to be replaced and we can also see that this, there's a lot of rust and corrosion on, on these ferrous parts here and a lot of dirt in general. So we'll now have to take the motor apart and uh, look at it closer. So now we're going to take this motor apart and uh, see what we can find inside. And the way to do that is to undo these uh, knurled nuts which suspend the motor from the frame and when in use this motor is not supposed to be touching the ground or the board that it's sitting on um, it's supposed to be suspended in the air and only coupled to this frame through through these shock mounts okay so now we've removed these knurled nuts we can put them in a safe container so they don't get lost put that away and now we can take the the couplings off which are pretty tight on there, I don't think maybe they've ever been removed before so they come off like that and all there's all gunge sticking to these these um, these threaded kind of studs so we might have to replace these these rubber couplings um, and there should also be a rubber grommet surrounding surrounding this stud um, from from the cast frame um, but they all seem to be missing on here so we might have to get something else to put in there um, in the bag that came with it there was some so I guess they went in there um, but these look kind of a bit knackered so they'll probably be, have to be replaced so put, put that aside then we can go to the next step right so now we've got all the uh, couplings off and the nuts and stuff this frame will just lift off and the motor is now resting on the floor or this board um, so this can just come off and we'll see what's below right so the motor is pretty dirty and just checking that all of these aren't 
aren't bent and they're nice and straight. We can see the, the broken one here. That is just so that's just unscrewed. So that's that's got sheared off at some point, so we'll have to get a new one to go in there. Um, and the next step is to kind of unscrew this, clean it up first and unscrew it so we can see inside. This top bit here is the starter motor which gets the motor up to speed and then once it's up to speed one of the main speeds is kicked in either 33, 45 or 78 but in this case 66 and 2 thirds because it's a later motor. So that this bit will just come off, there will be a coil in here um, and that will, that will come out with these screws undone, although it might be a little bit stuck because it's quite old. So I just want to pour some paraffin. into a little tray and using an old t-shirt is quite good just to clean the grease off the motor um, and I hoovered off all the loose bits and the main reason is because we don't really want any bits of gunk falling into the motor when we take this off we want it to be as clean inside as possible um, to save work later trying to clean out more gunk so We'll give this another final clean later, but this is just an initial one. So now we've removed all the loose bits of dirt and grease from the outside. We're just going to undo these screws here. We're going to undo all of them. So the starter motor cap and this, this main uh, plate here, so that we can remove the starter motor. Sometimes this gets a little bit stuck on here, so removing this plate means you can lift the whole thing and push this plate down in order to get this off easier. Um, we'll also have to remove this starter motor capacitor here which acts as the phase shift capacitor. So un unscrew the wires from this terminal block, remove this motor by the nut below it and this, this uh, clip here and then this unit should all come out. So now we're going to unscrew all the screws which and sometimes be a bit tight and again we're going to put those in our little tray okay so now we have the motor run capacitor disconnected and this cable and we have undone all these screws on top this starter motor should just lift off sometimes because these units are pretty old 50 60 years old they can be kind of a little bit stuck to this plate here so sometimes you have to lift this plate and and knock it down while holding that just tap it but we'll see if this one comes off right, this one's quite loose so there is the starter motor, there's the coils and um, there's some rubber there just falling out, a bit of perished rubber. So that will all need cleaning up and, um, and here is the starter motor, the other part to it which is allen keyed onto the shaft. So we need an allen key here to remove this off. This all looks very rusty um, so we might have to use a little bit more um, force than usual to get that off and maybe soak some oil in there as well just to get rid of this rust okay so as this looks pretty rusted on um, it's best to use as little force as possible obviously to get this off as we don't want to risk damaging any parts so I'm going to put a bit of WD-40 penetrating oil in here just to try and cut through a bit of that rust and corrosion. Just let that soak in for 10 minutes or so. And while we're doing that we can use our allen key to undo this which may all also be
kind of rusted in, but we'll see here. Uh, that's come off quite easily. So get that out. Not all the way, obviously, otherwise it will fall out and you lose it. Have a fag while you're waiting for that to penetrate in and then come back. And uh, you might need to have two, but um, we'll see what happens really when we come back to that. All right, so this has been soaking for about 10 minutes. And uh, if you've had your cigarette or whatever it is you do in your spare time, um, and you come back to it and then just kind of give it a twist. And this one's freed up immediately and it's, it's moving up and down. So this needs to be twisted off without putting on too much pressure. Alright, that's just come off. And this is very rusty compared to a lot of other motors. Um, so it looks like it's either been left out in the rain or some engineer has had a few too many beers and spilt one on this or something, I don't know. But we're going to have to clean this up um, when we put it back together. The underside looks a lot cleaner, so some something's obviously got through from the top. So we'll put that aside, come back to it, and now we're left with the main motor. So the starter motor has completely come off this now, and we're left with the main motor. So we're going to remove this plate, which has the bearing attached to it. The main upper bearing is just here, um, and it's recessed into this this plate. So oh, that's not coming off. So as this plate was being stubborn at coming off, I've suspended the motor in the frame. So the motor's hanging off, off the floor and I've uh, raised the frame on some blocks of wood uh, so that I didn't have to use these couplings in order to hang it because the, the thread on the stud doesn't go down the whole way. So now, in theory, if we give this a tap, it will hold the top plate where it is and, and the rest of the motor will go down separating the top bearing from this plate so if we use a piece of wood and a hammer give it a tap there it goes and now, now the bearing is free from the top plate we should be able to take this off and lift the plate off okay so once this top plate is now loose um, and there's no dirt on top that's going to fall inside when we lift it up <clears throat> we can take this off and now we can see this bearing this is the top bearing and, and if I turn that I can feel that it's, it's lumpy, it's not smooth and there's all sorts of oil here which is probably grease which has slowly poured out of this bearing because the top, the top the the other side of the bearing, the top half, isn't actually sealed, it's open. Um, and anyway, this has all gone into here and it's it's all a bit of a mess. This should be absolutely clean because there shouldn't be any oil in this. It should just be the grease in the bearing, which is your only lubricant. Um, so this will have to be taken out, replaced with a new bearing, and all cleaned up. And... Uh, the next step is to remove this rotor and to have a look at the bottom bearing which will be on the other end of this shaft. Okay, so this in theory should pull out now and the bearing should be attached to the other end of this shaft. If this doesn't come out easily we'll have to remove the bottom plate um, which is similar to this and it will be like that underneath except the bearing won't be in this it will be on the shaft and um, so if this doesn't come out we'll have to remove that bottom plate so let's see okay so this doesn't want to come so I don't want to put any pressure on this and damage any of these teeth so we'll have to turn it over and remove the bottom plate okay so now we have to get the bottom plate off because I can't pull out the main bearing shaft through the motor so I've got it upside down on the frame with a couple of bits of wood here to to protect it because we don't want any metal on metal contact there so now we should be able to unscrew all these screws and remove this plate if we can't remove that we can turn it upside down again and tap the main shaft and it will push this plate off so now we can undo all the screws which are usually quite tight and take all these out and then we should be able to get it off
So it's a good idea to mark with a pen where what the position of the plate is just so you can put it back in the same place okay so now we've removed the screws from the bottom plate this hole well we, we couldn't pull this out so we're just going to remove this bit instead which should just come off like that there we go being careful not to try and scrape the metal uh, put this aside and there we have the bottom bearing on the bottom plate which needs separating so we may have to tap this off as it may be a bit stuck on there so if this plate is being stubborn and the bearing is stuck in there you might want to put it on its side and just turn it and tap it out like this and that should be enough to loosen it ok here we go we keep tapping this lightly there she comes she's off and that's where the bearing sits in there and it was obviously just stuck in there because of this hard grease so that all needs to be cleaned out and then if we turn this over we can see the bottom bearing and again all the grease has come out so that bearing needs to come off and be replaced Here are throwing. Okay, so now we've got all the motor apart. It's time for a little break. So you can have a fag and a tea or whatever. And um, just have a little look. And if, if you look at this, you see here are the three speeds, these different, these different gears. In fact, they're not actually gears. They're just because uh, they don't touch the other part of the motor. But if you count this number of teeth, and then if you do 120 times the frequency of the motor divided by the amount of teeth you'll get, you'll get the, uh, the speed so on this bit here, on this bottom bit, there's 90 teeth so 120 times 50 which is 50 cycles, this motor is 6000 and then divided by 90 gives you 66.66 as this is a 66 and 2 thirds motor instead of 78 which no one seems to know why they've done that. So the next step, after you've chilled out a little bit, the next step is to get this bearing off, clean it up and uh, put a new bearing on. So now it's time to pull this main bottom bearing off and to do that we obviously need a bearing puller and this one works well. We have to add a little piece of metal here because this this shaft isn't quite long enough um, but that's quite easy just get something and make sure it's central to the main shaft and that this is nice and snug in there and isn't going to slip off I'll put a link to where you can get this bearing puller in the description in case you need to get one um, so now you just take your socket spanner and begin tightening and the bearing will just come off nice and easy pull it off and then there we go there's the bearing so unscrew this there was the little thing I used in the middle and then we loosen off the bearing puller and there's the bearing And uh, these bearings are called a 6305Z and they're sealed both sides and some of the earlier ones are open on the top side so this side you can see the bull race if it's on there like that and, and all the grease and uh, this is obviously 
started leaking and all the grease is pouring out there's hard bits and there's thin bits so this will have to be replaced um, and once you pull a bearing off it generally kind of ruins it anyway because you're putting stress on it um, so that's off and it's time to clean this and uh, put a new one on okay so we've turned the rotor over to get to the bot where the bottom bearing goes and we've done this again by putting it on the mainframe two blocks of wood to protect this metal from getting damaged so now we're on the underneath side to do this bottom bearing we need to tap it on and again we'll need to use a tool to do that so I have this piece of wood which again is just going to touch the inside of the bearing because if we bang the outside of the bearing it will distort it so again this is the same bearing as the top one the 6305 2Z and uh, let's open this up. It's important not to get any dust or iron filings on this, obviously. Um, again, the writing goes outside so that people can see it. So that doesn't go on, which is right because that needs tapping on. So we take our piece of wood and it has to be dead center and take a copper mallet or rubber mallet, this is a rubber one, and uh, we're going to tap it on and it, it will reach a hilt which is there. So let's see how many times this takes. Okay, let's blow the dust off and that's the bottom bearing installed and ready to go and that feels nice and smooth and brand new and that's how we want it. Okay, so now we have the bottom bearing out, we need to get the top bearing out which has become stuck in this uh, recess here which is on this top plate. So the way we get this bearing out is we use a bearing puller which is designed to go inside the bearing, grip it and then you use this slide hammer to pull it out like that. So what happens is this goes inside the bearing and flanges out and grips it. So I've already got that in there and I've tightened it with my spanners. So now I'm going to screw in the slide hammer. Like this. Nice and tight. And then we just uh, slide this up quick and uh, should come out in a few goes, so here we go. Okay, it's coming up now. Here we go, one more. There it comes. So there is the top bearing, and it feels pretty, pretty rough. That should be smooth. And inside here are some shims usually three shims yep there's three in this one so this all needs to be cleaned and um, and the, the, but the new bearing won't go in here it will go on the actual motor shaft so now we need to clean all the parts up and get ready to put all the new bearings in and and then re reassemble the, the motor now we've removed this top bearing from this top plate and we've cleaned up the whole thing using paraffin and and giving it a good clean we're ready to put the new top bearing in now the top bearing is not supposed to uh, be squeezed into this it's supposed to be on on the main rotor shaft which is here and we've also cleaned this up this was all rusty before and it's had a good clean with paraffin and some of the corrosion has been removed using fine wire wool but you need to remember to hoover it properly and suck up all the bits of iron filings because we don't want any on any of these parts. So now we need to take the new bearings which we have here and there's obviously two bearings in the motor. We need to put this in and and uh, it will be a lot better than the original. So let's take this out.
So here's the new bearing and it feels nice and smooth, unlike the original. It's not lumpy or anything, it's just nice and free. So in order to put this on, we need to have the writing face up. So the writing is here and this goes on here and it needs to go all the way down as far as it will go. Right, sometimes these bearings don't just slide on as they should um, and they need tapping on and the way to do that is to use some kind of tube um, which is made from a material that is softer than the bearing and you want to make sure that the tube is not touching the outside part of the bearing so it must be on, on the inside part and if it does touch the outside part and it's tapped it will distort the bearing so if this didn't slide on easily um, again writing side up that would go there and the tube would be placed on there right dead center in the middle and that would just be tapped on like that but in this case this bearing is fitting on properly so that won't need to happen okay so now we have the bearings installed we're ready to assemble the motor back so what we need to do that is we need to place this main motor body the outside part um, back on the table bottom side up and uh, all of this has been cleaned so it's nice and free of dirt and gunk and stuff and we need to replace this bottom plate this is where the bottom bearing sits here so we need to put this back on and um, and there's also the bracket here that holds the uh, the capacitor the phase shift capacitor for the start motor so just to make it easier I can use my mark that I made earlier which lines up to there and this will get screwed back on okay so the motor is upright now and the bottom plate has been screwed on and all of this has been cleaned and you have to make sure there's no gunk or crap inside any of this especially iron filings and it's just good to clean it out in general and this is the bottom plate here so you can see where the, that bottom bearing is going to rest and we can also see the coils here which connect to this this terminal block here which is a Grelco block, it's made by Grelco um, and these there's two coils for every speed, so there's three speeds, so there's six coils in total and this is a single phase motor so basically when you're running at say 33 and a third one coil is 180 degrees out of phase to the other um, and that magnetizes these poles which keeps the motor moving um, as a synchronous motor. So anyway, so now we're ready to load in the main motor shaft and we can see there's our bottom bearing we've installed and this should just slot nice and easy into that bottom plate like so and then that should don't want to turn this too much because we don't want to make it rock back and forwards and put any strain or anything but that should just sit in there nicely and be flush with the top parts here these should be absolutely flush um, and now you might notice that the top bearing is not on here that's because that fitted so well so I've decided to put that into the top plate there and then when I lower this on that will just slip over it so again this has been all nice and cleaned and you have to remember to put the shims back in here there's usually three and um, now this will just slide nicely on sit there and there's the motor turning nice and freely comes to a nice stop it doesn't grind to a sudden halt and it's nice and quiet but this is not correct because we have to have this screwed down so that's absolutely essential because we don't want any sideways motion here so now we are ready to mount the starter motor um, but this, this plate can be screwed down first. Now I've installed the top plate back with the top bearing underneath. 
um, and it's all clean and I've got these screws in I've left this one loose because that's got the clip um, but try and tighten them evenly now it's time to put the starter motor back on and this is the bit that was uh, rusted on to here but this has all been cleaned up now using fine wire wool and um, just general kind of paraffin and stuff and now that is sliding on nicely onto there and we use our allen key to tighten that on like so don't really want to go too tight with this but enough to hold it on there so that's on there and now we need to put the starter motor on so we bung that back on like so that obviously goes there because that capacitor mounts there so now we can screw this back on so now the motor is uh, fully assembled with the starter motor back on um, it's time to put the main casting housing back which this motor hangs from and I had to make a new uh, post here because there was one missing well it wasn't missing but the most of it was missing that that sits like that in there so it sheared off at some point so I've had to make a new one using a piece of steel rod uh, which is 6mm and the bottom thread is an M6 thread and the top thread is, M is also M6 but 0.75 um, thread pitch so now we've got that we're ready to put the, the casing back on it's always good when you're cleaning parts to do the washing up as well just to make sure that everyone is happy in the house if you're cleaning oily parts in the sink if you live on your own you'll be alright which goes here like so now there's supposed to be some uh, rubber uh, grommets that go on this stud and fit between this casting and the stud but these original ones are completely shagged and falling apart and crumbly and swollen and stuff so I've ordered some new ones you can just use rubber tubing which fits in here um, and cut it to size um, or you can find something else you can use but that seems to work um, so now, oh and also another thing to check is that the feet, the rubber feet are still good and soft and that they're actually there because that acts as another form of isolation. So now once that's there and we put our rubbers in which we haven't done yet because we haven't got those yet, we're ready to put these top caps back on. Now if you remember the original cap had this thing in it which is uh, also completely uh, gone so it's just completely buggered as well it's dry it should be nice and thick and spongy but it's just shrunk up like this every Lyric motor has these now because they're just the parts are too old and they're gone so what I've done is I've cut some rubber out um, 25 mil rubber 20 25 mil and I've cut using a, a circle cutter and that fits in there and that plonks on there and that's nice and even and then our knurled nut will just go nicely on there and then we'll do that all the way around and then that will be the motor finished okay so the motor is complete and I've put these rubber bushings on and I'm still waiting for the rubber grommets to go just underneath here but I'll have to wait for those to come but I can test it in the meantime and to do that I'm going to plug in a little power supply here 
Um, this is actually a half speed box made by Lyrec to run these motors. So I've got it plugged into the 45 RPM terminals. And as it's a synchronous motor, it needs a helping hand to get started. So what I'm going to do is put on a weight, which I have to keep it going. Uh, it's just an old turntable, it doesn't really matter what it is, it's just any old weight. And it's not going to sit on here straight, but it will just, it will just keep it going. Um, so if I give this a little spin and then plug in the motor, we should have lift off. And there it is. So that's half speed of 45 RPM. And the motor is running nice and silent. Just as it should, there's no noise at all. I'm going to unplug that. Take this off. And also when these are set up on, on a lathe, um, when it's in position, uh, you should use a spirit level and measure it each way and make sure that it's absolutely level using these knurled nuts um, and also make sure that there's a gap between the surface that this frame rests on and the motor so there should be a space so this motor is purely hanging on this frame and not touching the floor otherwise that will cause rumble in the system and uh, I think that just about wraps up the old uh, Lyrec motor reconditioning. Pretty good. You know what I mean? They don't get it. Basically, basically. So